Never have I ever stolen something from a job. <laughs> I have. There's a story there. There's multiple stories. I'm trying to see which one I can legally tell. I love that. I burped away. There's nothing <laughs> that I love more than a burp entrance. So courteous, right? Nick Trawick. Hello. Club Tora. Hi. Welcome to After Curfew. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. We got the rosé. Like got the bubbly flowing. I'm ready to... Are you? Are you? I'm, I'm you so look ready like you're ready. To yap. You have no idea. I, this is the yap factory. I'm so excited. Are you a yapper? I am a yapper. Okay. Selectively. A selective yapper. Yeah, selective yapper. I am. I'm, I feel like I'm the same way. So I want to talk to you before we get started and all the tea. Mm -hmm. How did Kleptora come about? So like at this current point, the evolution of Kleptora it, it's she just grown into who she is now and just off just so many trial and errors of eventually me just turning her into me. But just from the start of it, she just started off as a simple video about inflation. And it was just a funny joke. I was already in the process of trying to be a content creator in LA. Mm. I'm one of the COVID creators that started in 2020. Uh, so many. And it was just, it was just a bit. And everybody like literally the very next day after posting it, I've never seen numbers like that. So I did more. It was like three days in a row of like three or four videos of backpack, backpack. And then I was like, is this it? Like, is this? You're like, hold on. Is you this? Know, you know, sometimes you get the moment. You're like, is this the moment I get to call my mom and, and like cry? And be like, mom, I made it. But it, I don't know if it really was at the time. But as a smart person, I was like, I have to ride this wave as much as possible. Yeah. Until people start getting tired of it. Well, until enough people start getting tired of it. Then, you know, I was shift, but they didn't get tired of it. So I just kept going. And then, you know, it just started as a content creator. You know, I have to, like, pay attention to the things that are being shown to me from my audience. And they're realizing more things. I'm realizing they're finding more aspects of it funny. So now it's just like the ideas are going nonstop. And so eventually that is just my brand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I... She didn't have a name at first. Everybody just everybody just kept calling her Black Dora. I've never said that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I never said that was my name, Black yeah. Dora. But hey, you know. But yeah, that's pretty much how she came about. It was just a bit, but I just had to ride that wave into who she is today. And part of that process was just started incorporating who Nick Trawick is and put him inside of Kleptora because, you know, it was a portfolio at that point. To show everybody how talented I am. Drink to that, honey. <laughs> Drink to that. You're from Alabama. You're from a small town, honey. Yeah. How did you get to the big city, Big Lights? I am from Dothan, Alabama. It is the peanut capital of the world. I lived there for, tw born and raised for 25 years. I've always, I, I like to say ever since I was um, literate enough to know what the word famous was, I was determined to be it in some form or fashion. But I always, for some reason, I always just knew it would happen. So I was just always just chilling. I didn't even step on a stage until 11th grade for the first time after just having years of wanting that passion. But like as a little artsy boy in a small town, you don't have too many creative outlets. So yeah. once I got to a point to where I was like fed up with myself for not chasing dreams and doing things that made me happy, mm -hmm. I just started finding every creative outlet that I could to throw myself into, which like I guess it worked out because, you know, you call it multifaceted. Like being able to do, you know, like doing so many different things. But I don't know. That's just what I always enjoy being. And that's what I always knew I would be. I'm not a I'm not a desk girly. I'm not an on the phone person. Mm -mm. I've tried those not jobs. A I didn't have an artistic job until like four years before I moved out here. But like I lost a job within a year because yapping, not standing <laughs> at my desk, um, just not being built. You were the personality hire. I was the personality yeah. hire. Everyone need, every business needs one. I just didn't have time for the bullshit. I never have time mm. for the bullshit. So like working in retail, everybody who has worked in retail knows those types of customers. Ooh. And I just was not built to handle that type of interaction with humans without having a severe reaction. You know, I had those instances. Every job I had was either like a collections or like, Law firm. Like, you, you worked in collections? I worked in collections. My first job after, high, I didn't have a job all through high school. My first job out of high school at 18, I worked collections for Verizon. 
the stories that you probably have. The stories I have, I worked for a law firm. You know, those TV commercials. That's like, if you have you might this be rash, entitled for compensation. Call this number. I was that number. Yeah. I got fired from that one by. <laughs> no. Yeah, I got fired for that one because I fell asleep at my desk and the big lady walked by. But like, girl, I'm tired. <laughs> Like, this job is boring. Let's bring some fucking Entertain theatrics me. in here. Like, right, I was literally the most exciting thing at that job. Oh, I can definitely, like, see that. <laughs> okay, so now we moved to L.A. And then just consecration just fell into your lap, basically, during COVID. I don't, I've always been a social media person. Okay. So, you know, it was like, at the time, in my tiny hometown of Dothan, Alabama, you know, my, Facebook. Facebook is my favorite site. Let me just disclaimer. You're it's lying. my Twitter. You're lying. People like Facebook for the old people. That's where I got my start. Wait, and are you I, still on Facebook? I love face. Follow me on Facebook. Everybody's <laughs> like, follow me on Instagram, YouTube. Follow me on Facebook. Facebook. I am. I post on there more than anything else. Stop. Bring it back. Were you like setting relationship statuses? Were you like, tell me like, how deep are you in the Facebook world? I. I mean, I have like. 200,000 followers on Facebook, which Humble is flex. just like, I don't, well, I was like, this was not a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> to some, yeah, but no, it's, I like having all my different social medias and it's kind of just a different personality of me on each one. Really? Instagram okay. is pretty much just Kleptora and the brand of what Kleptora is. We're going we're gonna to start like putting more Nick on the page, but Facebook is all my profile picture. I'm in a wig, but like, it's all just Nick at all hours of the day. Every thought that comes to my head, I think I'm hilarious. You are, 100%. <laughs> so, I don't know, I have the most fun on Facebook. How everyone does Twitter, I do Facebook that way. Mm. And I recommend everyone continue to use it. Cheers. What What was I talking about before that? I love Facebook Well, you that just much. Like, gave us like a Facebook like <laughs> Yeah, they promo. should pay me for that. Like, hi, Facebook sponsor <laughs> us, thank you. Um, oh, no, I remember. Hometown, so, Little Alabama, Peanut City. Yeah, Peanut City, you know, Doing post content. going viral on, you know, my small town, just always making people laugh just as a local thing. Started doing YouTube, and then I moved here with no intention of doing that at all. Yeah. I moved here with no intention of doing anything artistic. I just wanted to get Alabama so bad that I was like, if I have to, if I have to work a nine to five, I would rather do that in California than here. And that was the mindset I came here with, but obviously... That didn't. As soon as I got here, I was like, I need to be a star. <laughs> I mean, doesn't everybody? I feel like majority of people that come to Los Angeles exactly. are looking for some type of. And like, I don't know why I was clout. fooling myself. I knew what the, what the gig was going to be when I got here. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was what happened when I moved here. I started the whole. I'm a theater boy. You are. I am. So I moved here with like. I literally flipped a coin between New York and L.A. when I decided to leave L.A. I mean Alabama because mm -hmm. I was like. I want the L.A. lifestyle. You know, we see all the YouTubers and things like that. But Broadway is in New York. Mm -hmm. Which one do I want to do? Flip a coin. Land it in L.A. Thank God. I would not have survived the pandemic in New York. Mm -mm. <laughs> and barely survived it here. But yeah. I, what was I talking about again? Hey, we're going to circle it back again. Let's circle it back. This Little is going to be a Alabama. recurring theme. You know what? I'm like My that ADHD too. is so bad. I was going to say... ADD. I almost brought a, a, a dry erase board to like I was gonna track say Adderall? myself. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta focus, babe. <laughs> um, a, not a dry erase board. So yeah, you the, your thoughts. I have a huge one in my apartment, and it has notes about it about every single thing. When people call me, I stand at my dry erase board and I write as I talk because I, had to I do will that too forget. In my notes app. Yeah. That's probably a little bit That's better. That's a little more normal. <laughs> you know what I'm not gonna say? That normal doesn't exist. Sorry. Yeah, what's that? Being in Alabama. How was your experience there doing all that? Personal, like it wasn't until 2020 here is when I like realized I had so much like racial trauma mm. from being a part of these of, like these specific environments as a black person in, in Alabama doing the artistic things like theater and or dance. It wasn't necessarily about like gender or sexuality. It was more so just I just was not comfortable all the time. You yeah. know, certain things I normalized. And then I realized when I got here, I was like, oh, that was not normal. When did you really have that realization where you're like, oh, that was actually not okay? I guess the number one thing was in 2020 when um, the George Floyd situation happened. That was the defining moment that I can go back and like have a timestamp in my brain of when I made that mental switch and that realization. Because during that, I've, I've been arrested so many times just randomly. My car searched for no reason, you know, getting pulled over for no reason, getting 
you know, put into the holding cell, just, you know, going to court. They'd be like, oh, we're just throwing it out, but still having to pay the court. You know, just just unnecessary stuff. I've been through all of it in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And then, like, once I remember it was one of the very first, I think it was the very first protest that happened. It was in DTLA. And it was right after the George Floyd situation. And I, that's when I was like, I said, just started thinking about all the other things like Sandra Bland. And it's like, I was like, I literally escaped something and I didn't realize that I escaped it. And I had number one thing to do is I got to use this voice. If I still got it, I got to use it. I remember calling my mom. I was like, Hey girl, <laughs> Then, you know, I'm going to hear where the crazy stuff is going on. Just heads up. Took my little red candle for some courage. And I went out there and I marched every single protest every single time because that's just what I felt was important. And that's that changed. It just changed me emotionally and mentally and spiritually. You know, I, I cried every single night mm -hmm. just trying to, like, release all the energy of all the people around me, you know, being susceptible of energy. That was a lot. Yeah. And also I was dealing with my own racial trauma that was coming up. But. In the end, I knew it was going to make me stronger. So I muscled through it, spoke up, still fight for what I believe in. And also just like continue being myself as healing myself along my journey and showing people this is, you know, this it's always going to be a happy outcome. I'm enjoying my life. I've always enjoyed my life. Mm -hmm. But when you have bouts where you like things come up, you can get through them. Just continue on, you know, <laughs> just when you hit a wall, just find a way to go around it. Thank you for sharing that. I of mean, course. that was like, yeah, I mean, 2020, I feel like had a lot of yeah things happening and like eyes being opened and it was just a time definitely right but it's so true what you say about like the trauma it's always going to be there you got to just keep working through it and it will build your character there's always going to be like a light at the end of the, the tunnel essentially 100 percent. let's lighten it up a little <laughs> let's lighten bit. it up a little but, Ooh, let's do a um, cheers yeah yeah let's do a little <laughs> so you, like, guzzle it down, like, i know right <laughs> i'm a lightweight I haven't like drank unless I've gone somewhere since the year has started. So I found myself becoming more of a lightweight. I think it's something also like when you start getting older, not saying we're old, but like <laughs> you're some, like, they think you're like, just put yourself in that <laughs> your own box, babe. I'm a little old, but I'm like, I cannot hang anymore. Yeah, I, I am just yesterday. I was in bed now. Granted, I didn't go to sleep until like midnight, but I was in bed at 9 p.m. You know, I have my social battery bedtime mm -hmm. and then my actual go to sleep bedtime. And that social battery bedtime gets earlier and earlier the older I get. Yeah. <laughs> like if I'm in bed by like 830, I'm like, Satisfied. amazing. Bye. I don't sleepy care. Sleepy time tea is my new thing. Ooh, what is sleepy time tea? It's just what does a that tea. Consist of? <laughs> I, CVS, they had a sale and it was like two for seven. But yeah, it's just like a tea that helps you go to sleep. And I put like three bags in like a cup and just refill it like three times mm -hmm. and just sit in the dark. I love being in the dark and by myself. Not in a sad way. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's a little dark. Not in a sad way, but just like in a peaceful, in my own place way. I love peace. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can only find it if I'm alone. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, I feel like life is so, like, overstimulating. It is. So sometimes, like, just shutting the shades and just, like, having a moment. Right. Is so, especially when you're on social media. And, like, it's kind of a, an addiction in a way. I don't know if you feel that way. Like maybe you have more self-control than I do, but I'm like, scroll, 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 sleep, wake up. Scroll, I'm scroll, always scroll. scrolling. If it's not for entertainment purposes, it's for work purposes mm -hmm. to see what's going on in like the realm. But each time always ends up with the same result of me <laughs> endlessly scrolling for hours and hours and hours. People say, what are your hobbies? And genuinely, if I'm not, my hobbies are work and yeah. my work consists of social media. So yeah. I am always doing something social media related and it is exhausting so i do like to sometimes i take my contacts out so i can't see can't anything see. and that's genius yeah i like already can't see and i like i'm so blind so like too. when i'm in like a room or just like overwhelmed i just take my contacts out there's nothing to focus on <laughs> i am just in my own pure like zen mode i'm gonna ask you yes are you dating? Like, tell me about your, like, relationship life. So I'm not typically, I, I don't have many stories to tell because I, I like to, uh, you, you've ever been on public transportation here in Los Angeles? Not in Los Angeles, but I'm from Chicago. Okay. And I've done a lot of so you've subway experienced, rides. So you've experienced the feeling of when you're at a bus stop and the driver just decides not to stop and just keeps going. 
and you're just left at the bus stop. You have to wait for the next one. You, there's yeah. nothing you can do. I am that bus driver in regard to my own love life. I'm just, I'm, I'm driving, I'm working, I'm moving. You better get on if, if you want to get on, you know, like hop on, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know it's, I'm in very metro mode. It's like, if you want to hop on, hop on, we'll do the screening as I'm continuously driving. But if not, this is your stop, you know, mm, so. They got to keep up. Yeah. You know, I've, everybody's not the smartest. You know, I've been in situations to where, you know, you've been fooled and you mm-hmm. get into a situation where you're like, how did I, how did I allow that to happen? Mm-hmm. Then you just move on from it. I don't know. I, I'm really okay with just being with myself. I would love to be, you know, everybody loves love, yeah. but I don't have a desire for it. If it comes, it has to be beneficial to me. hundred percent. It has to be beneficial to me. I'm not here to, I'm not, I'm not going to do it just for the sake of doing it. Like I have work to do. Yeah. <laughs> I have a life. I have a That's career like that I'm trying to, to build. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want it to be a distraction. If it's going to be present in my life, it needs to be an addition mm-hmm. and like help me. I don't know, just like in different ways, spiritually and internally. You know, I'm not here to babysit anyone. I'm not asking to be babysat. You know, I was. I want reciprocity. I want communication. And also, I just want somebody who's like actually obsessed with me. Not I mean, obsessive, but just obsessed with me, mm, which yeah. is like pursuit. That's the better word. I'm not here to be, I'm not here to chase, number one. There are people who do, and I'm appreciative of those people because I wouldn't have a job to be just the attractee, <laughs> but I'm yeah. not a chaser. You know, I've been in relationships in the past that mm-hmm. at the time, you know, you think that, oh, this is going to be good, but you always know deep down, you're like, I'm not being myself. So th- it won't yeah. really last. And then when it ends, you're like, all right, let me get back on my bullshit. <laughs> you know, I'm a Leo, so I'm always just like. I knew. <laughs> I knew you were a fucking Leo. August. The main character energy within you is like. <laughs> You can see it from a mile away. Yeah, so it was, it's just like I, I it's main character. I am the main character, and I like to think of it like I'm a bouncer as well for like my energy in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's gonna wait in the line. We're gonna make sure this idea isn't fake. You know, we're not gonna let you in and then like kick you out for acting drunk. We're gonna make sure you're good before you get in. If not, you're gonna wait in the line until I decide to let you in. It's kind of how I now have decided to just operate in my. In all my relationships and in life, I have like three friends. Mm-hmm. I am not. <laughs> I'm not in like the scene. I don't really go out too much. And if I do, I stay in my little circle. You know, like I will speak to people who come up to me and things. But I don't know. I am very cautious of my energy, and I know the things that I can and can't handle. So I just will allow myself not to be around it if I don't need to be. Yeah. In order to keep peace. I'm literally Miss America. World peace. World peace. <laughs> Internal peace is all I want. And if but anything that, is going to ruin that, it has to go. Yeah, I think that's so important. And everybody should like take a lesson out of that book where it's like, if something is not serving you or if you step away from something and it does not make you feel good, remove it. A hundred percent. Whether it's like friendships, relationships, a job, like anything. It's like you have to protect that. Like you're sacred. You have to protect your peace. You exactly. You have to protect. Yeah. I feel so disgusting. Have you always like? Because you said like you've had some relationships that have been not the best. Mm-hmm. Like, let's talk a little bit more about that. Like, was it like through those experiences that you're like, I need to really like be selective? Uh, yeah. There's always like I'm always there's always something to come from every relationship that you're in or that you remove yourself from or somebody removes you from, yeah. there's always something to learn. Like, and that's yeah. the mindset. Like, <laughs> someone, oh, snap. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's always a lesson to be learned. My mindset is always, oh, that really fucking sucked. Oh, well, learn, got to learn something from that and move on. Mm-hmm. There's always something to take from a situation like that, even if it's only, I'm never going to be that fucking stupid again. You know, that's, that's a great lesson to uh, be taught. <laughs> I've had so many of those lessons where, like, I'm like, bitch. Right. That won't happen again. So, like, even if that is the only lesson that you take from the situation, that's enough. Mm-hmm. And it's like one of the last situations, like, relationships that I was a part of, it was I realized that I realized that I wasn't being myself, but I was also in a new era of trying to figure out who this new self was. Yeah. Because I've gone through many different, like, spiritual breakthroughs and awakenings since living here for five years. The beauty of L.A., right? <laughs> Everybody Everyone. that I know comes to LA, has an awakening, yes. shoves a crystal up their ass. <laughs> like 
Does it all. <laughs> Does it all. And it was also like at the peak of my career. So it was like trying to understand. And no, I was like living a life that I always wanted, but I wasn't being able to fully enjoy it because of like anxiety over a situation and things like that. And that's never really been me. I literally had to get put on anxiety medication at the time. And I stopped after a few months. I was like, you know what? This I've never had to do this before. I literally have something has to change to stop. yeah like everybody has that breaking point you know sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get to that breaking point than usual as long as you get to it right if it's not serving you when you finally hit that breaking point you gotta that's a lesson to be learned and you gotta get out of there i've always battled with anxiety so does a lot of people you know i'm not one to like do a misdiagnosis situation but like <laughs> i that, am that it <laughs> i'm on webmd and i am diagnosing myself with exactly like and yeah that's basically what i mean but like i honestly feel like that is just a a, a human reaction same as like anger and things like that is having anxiety over situations and it can just get out of whack to where, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't control it. You know, same thing with anger. Yeah. Some, I don't know. Do people, are like, people like that with happiness? <laughs> <laughs> if they are, they're probably like is on drugs in West Hollywood. Like medication to make people less happy. Yeah. And that was just a time where my anxiety, it, I was always thinking about something that I should not have been thinking about. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, and that creates more anxiety because I'm a firm believer of the things that you speak manifest yes. and the things that you think manifest which creates more anxiety because i'm like i'm creating i'm creating this anxiety and now i'm gonna make it happen in real life and now i'm anxious about that and i don't know how to stop it so that makes me anxious yeah. you know it was a revolving door of just it, it's like a vicious it's, cycle it's a vicious yeah. cycle and yeah i it was one i just had another breaking point moment to where i there was, I was in like situations to where I should have been enjoying myself to the fullest mm -hmm. because part of like me having this new career, you know, I spent a lot of time at the beginning of it. You know, I didn't really get a chance to like build too much of a relationship with my, with my followers. I can't even call them really a fan base because I spent majority of those times, like as I was like becoming more viral and things like that, of just like healing inner yeah. child, because I knew before I can like jump into the world, have everybody in my business, I got to make sure I'm good first. So it's like, I'm just going to post my little funny video, but then I'm just going to be in privacy, you know, mm -hmm. like traveling to countries and things like that. Like there were certain moments like in that process and in that journey of like healing inner child that I couldn't fully enjoy because I was having anxiety about my relationship. And that was just not okay. Yeah, that was just not okay for me because I was like, I don't know. If I'm ever going to get this opportunity again, you know, fame can come and go. Mm -hmm. Money can come and go, you know, I was blessed with this opportunity right now. I need to make the most of it. And the fact that I could not was that was really bad for me. I mean, anxiety is such a tricky thing because it does kind of come out of nowhere. But then when you really start to look at like, okay, I'm maybe I'm making poor choices, like in like these three departments mm -hmm. in my life. And that probably is what's like triggering some type of anxiety. Right. Like I know during COVID I had like episodes where I was constantly having panic attacks to the point where I couldn't leave my house. I like went to the hospital. I'm like, I'm having a heart attack. They're like, <laughs> right. oh, no, bitch, you're having a panic attack. I'm like, well, what's the difference? Because it feels right. the same. But it's just one of those things where you're like, you do have to start like picking apart your life and seeing like, what could be the root of this? And then let's keep removing the layers and try to get it better. But yeah, sometimes the treatment is not just like surface level. You have to dig deeper to figure out. All the things that you're trying to treat are just like the branches to the root. And you gotta right. you got to dig deeper and figure out what is the, the sole cause of all of this? Yeah. And once you figure that out, like me, once I figure it out, it got to go. Mm -hmm. I have to start, you know, detaching myself, you know, like slowly but surely. Always going to be hard, but like that's the, it's like working out. It hurts and it's going to be hard, but you always end up stronger in the end. Yeah. So it's like, it's the same thing. Everything has that same type of like flow. So that's what, that's pretty much my mindset in that situation. I have to start removing myself and then heal as I am growing into the next new stronger version of myself. It's always going to be stronger no matter what. And yeah. I look for, always look forward to whatever that new version of Nick is going to be right. after a bad situation. I know. Isn't that so funny? Like any bad situation that has ever happened to me, I'm always like, this is good for the plot and it's going to teach me something. <laughs> you know, you never really walk yeah. away from a shit situation and you're like, I mean, yeah, you're, you're like, this is awful, but yeah. You've learned. Even like you said, we're like, if it's only 
I'm not gonna do this shit again. You have learned something. So you just keep going off that. Yes. Yeah. And also it is okay to be sad in it too. That's another thing. I I don't like being sad, but if I have the opportunity to be sad, oh I'm gonna milk it. It's the Leo. I'm a drama queen. It's the Leo <laughs> within you. I'm like, it doesn't happen too frequently. So when it does happen, I'm going to milk it. And that's me um, like in my room in the dark. We were just talking about it <laughs> <laughs> on the break, listening to sad music on purpose. Just so that my, my go-to is always Whitney Houston. I was going to ask you, what's the go-to? Whitney Houston is my number one favorite artist. Really? Yes. Yeah, so in any aspect of happiness or whatever thing I need, she's being played for some reason, you know, to get me in whatever mood I need to be in. But, ooh, she got me good in mm-hmm. that last relationship situation. I was like, these songs are hitting harder than it's like ever. Hitting. <laughs> I mean, we love a good Whitney Houston. We love a good Whitney oh, Houston. She's an icon. Speaking of icons. Uh oh. Ooh, <laughs> you know where I'm going. Uh oh. You know where I'm going with I this. I knew exactly what yeah, you were about I'm like, to say. I see a segue and I'm going to take it. Mm. Miss Queen Bee Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Mm. I heard we had a little beef, a little tiff. I, I don't know where you're getting your information. I legally cannot speak. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is probably, I think that is probably one of the most iconic things that I have ever curated and mm-hmm. will ever curate. People can agree or disagree. I don't care. People don't know the links, I, the things that I've done to make that simple, tiny little saga wait can you give a little synopsis for people who don't well it was like okay so what people who live under a rock so what happened is like literally for people who live under the rock as a preface (laughs) i spent six months of 2023 pretending to be in a lawsuit with (laughs) beyonce so what happened was i just got tagged in the video of her doing a walk like doing the, the initial walk video that i saw and it was only one person who had tagged it. Nobody else had tagged me in it. It was just one person. I was like, in a creative role, as a content creator, I'm like, all right, what are we going to do? <laughs> How are we going to make this work? So I um, I think I just posted, like, the video of her walking, and I put it, like, the door music behind it mm-hmm. and just made, like, a post on Instagram. I was like, y'all think I'm tripping or should I block her? And the reaction I got from that post alone, I was like, okay, so there's something there. this was this was like the key, like the <gasps> gas, <laughs> the foot on the gas pedal yeah. is what I'm trying to say. I was like, all right, so we got to, it's time to start milking shit. That's, that's my favorite part about being a content creator. If you are in a rut, use your audience to figure out something and then milk the hell out of it. I spent six months <laughs> pretending to sue Beyonce. <laughs> so good. And so, yeah, it started off with that. And then my friend actually had the idea of putting myself in one of her dance videos. And I was like, okay, so if I'm continuing this this joke, it will make more sense. Be like, oh, this is my settlement. (laughs) This is (laughs) my payment for doing it is being a part of the Renaissance tour. So did that video of me dancing with her in blue, went viral again. And I'm like, all right, so this is a common theme. I was many posts in between, but it got to where now she's on her way to LA for the Renaissance tour. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like I haven't been told anything, but like, you know, there's just a certain energy. <laughs> Maybe it's because she's Beyonce where you're like, am I playing too much? <laughs> yeah. You're like, don't mess with Beyonce. Like, it's not like, Oh, is she noticing me? It's more like, did she notice me? And she not liking it? No, it's, she didn't say anything, and I'm not saying, oh, because it's everywhere. It was more just so, like, I don't know. I, I like to assume people's sense of humor sometimes. Yeah. And I was like, I've taken this really far. <laughs> and I know for a fact the second I put on the internet Beyonce and lawsuit in the same sentence, her people were on it. I know that for a fact. Why wouldn't they be? Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, so I kind of want to see if we really, like, did I, could I have potentially started beef with one of the most popular people, like, powerful people in oh, the world? Yeah. So I was like, what's what's the risks that I'm willing to take to find out? But also, be cunt. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I am who I am. Yeah. So I, I had a, a friend of mine is one of her designers. I paid him to make me a pink replica of one of her tour looks <laughs> to wear. <laughs> It made like a Kleptora Renaissance outfit that was a replica of one of her tour looks and then paid some money, me and my friend, and we were row one seats one and two so I can be right in her face. Front and center. 
to make sure that she sees me so I can determine if, do I have beef with Beyonce? <laughs> Stop. Not but, at her concert. Yes. I was at her concert. Um, I was like, I'm really like, I want to know, like, is this something that I probably played around too much with? But also if so, I have to, I'm going to milk it. Like mm -hmm. we got the same contact. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I went to levels and it was all purely for the content. Yeah. I'm so, that's one of my favorite parts about this job is investing solely for the content. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so much fun for me because at the end of the day, I probably, I definitely put out more into like that situation, that concert of hers <laughs> that I paid the designer and for the tickets, spent way more money than I made in the content that I put out for it. But it's all just like internal, like I loved that. That was so much fun for me because... I don't know. It was all one sided. She did not care. But like I made a lot of people care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like this. That's my favorite thing about like social media. And I think a lot of people take social media too seriously. Yeah, I think of it like reality television. I'm never expecting any. I, I expect everything on social media to be satire. <laughs> and if it's not, I'm genuinely shocked. Yeah. So it's like if everybody just understood that and like people are always talking about like different creators and influencers and like, oh, they're flexing and things like that. I was like, no, it's, it's a bit, you know? So it's like, you get to create whatever you want for purely entertainment purposes. And that's mm -hmm. what I decided to do for the Beyonce thing. It's not real. You know, she and I don't know each other. There's no real, you well, know, she did I'm, shout you out. She shouted you out. Okay. So this is some tea on that. <laughs> Tell me the tea, spill it. Part of being a content. I'm like, I literally have never said this before, but so I had the video, which is when I was there, she called me out and I had my true sign. Mm -hmm. And the reason I paid so much money is to be right there in front of her face and to have this. She was like, everybody wear this color. And I was like, I'm going to be right in her front of her face with pink and orange on. So she, I make sure that she sees me because I had a plan. Mm -hmm. and I was like this. I, the perfect ending to this saga is Beyonce and I making amends, having a truce, mm -hmm. but she doesn't know what's going on. So right, how do right. I do that? So I, I'm a, I like, I'm a power manifester. So I remembered I have, I had two signs. One sign said truce. And that's what I used for my content. Mm -hmm. But I had a separate sign that I knew for, I was like, at the end of this concert, when she flies above us, like spongebob squarepants <laughs> not spongebob squarepants <laughs> i see the visual i am going to i had a sign that says say my name say my name kleptora and i was like she's going to see it and she's going to read it out loud for my content and i'll be damned when she got up in the air and hovered over us that entire section she read no other sign but mine but miss misread it and called me cleopatra so then that, it just became the next thing. And, but however, I was like gagged in the video that I posted. And it, one, because she, she acknowledged me that that's crazy. Insane. But two, it was just like, I, you're just so loud and so wrong. Like you just call me Cleopatra on this microphone for the ending oh, of it. I was like, this is just so funny to me. And it was just, it was just the perfect ending to the saga that mm -hmm. I had created. And it's just like, that's the fun in social media for me. It's just. Creating universes that don't exist <laughs> just purely for entertainment purposes. Yeah. Have I burned the bridge? Probably, but it was funny. It was worth it. It was worth it. That is, I mean, that's exclusive tea. That's that was exclusive. Tea. Nobody because really I knew thought, that. Yeah. And, and that's she like, was here for the, but that was like the, the plan. Line. And the fact that it worked out is why I say that is probably the most iconic things I've ever done because the whole storyline, she was not really a part of, but I had to make her a part of it. <laughs> she, was, she was, but she didn't know. Yeah, she was, yeah, but she, she was very it. involved. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's like a little mastermind when it comes to that part of social media. Like, that's one of my things. I love social media. Who's to say there's not multiple accounts that I'm currently running? Mm, do you have a Finsta? I wouldn't even say Fensters or like who would just not say there's multiple popular accounts that I'm not behind. You know, who's to say, Ooh. who's to say, but like, that's my, that's my <laughs> favorite part. Say? Right. People are like, what do you do? And I'm like, I do content creator. What don't I do, bitch? <laughs> that's the real question. I'm a content creator at the end of the day. And that's my favorite thing to do. And yeah, I have a lot of fun doing it because there's a filter between real life and social media that when people see things through a screen, it's, I call it the psychology of social media. 
You hmm. can make people believe anything. I try to be respective. Well, I not try to. I am respective in every aspect that I do. But, like, there's just so many different things that can catch it, capture people's attention. And I just love playing around with it, honestly. <laughs> it's always been a thing of mine. Yeah. Just, like, pushing the limits. Just pushing the well limits. With your yeah, content. I can't wait till there's, like, a Forbes article, like, the top 10 social media accounts are all made by this person. And then you open the article and it's just me. Like, <laughs> like your Dora outfit. Hi, yeah. Dora wig. That was part of like the journey beginning with social media is trying to do use all my social media knowledge with other companies and it never worked out. And then I just decided to use it on myself and now here we are. Here we are with a, a wig and a dream. Here we are with a wig and a dream. The brains behind the bob. The brains behind the bob. I love a good bob. And I, I love that you went with like a Dora fit. Like it was genius. So I just had the costume, and then a few months later, I, I pulled it out the closet for the video, and now I'm selling merch <laughs> with my name on it and actual backpacks with my I, image on it. I wish. Isn't that iconic, though? Yeah, I want one. We're gonna we're doing a whole like rebranding. That's I've been in hermit mode rebranding. Yes. Yeah, you were saying that before we started rolling. Mm -hmm. So we stepped aside for a minute, but Dora's coming back better than ever. Like, what are some things that we can expect once you? Well, it was like, Step back out. since I, I blew up really fast. I'm not going to bullshit. Like I blew up really fast, especially on Instagram. I had a million followers within a year from 2000 wow, or at least right out of year. So it was like, I blew up really fast and I never got the chance to, cause like I was saying, I was too focused on healing myself to like be in the bullshit of like being a creator. So I didn't really get a chance to build a relationship with my audience you know I kind of became as just a meme as a visual meme but like realistically like I ain't doing all this just for that I'm doing all this for people to get to know who I am right I love myself I want everybody else to <laughs> to get a piece experience. of the pie you know you get, get part of the experience yeah. so it's like I do I've done all this stuff because that's what I want but I had to like make sure I was good first Mm -hmm. So now I'm glad I'm in this era to where I've done a lot of healing. I've done a lot of inner work to where now I feel like I'm comfortable being in a spot to where, you know, if I disappear for months, anybody in my business trying to figure out where I'm at. <laughs> but like, I'm okay with now getting to that point. So it's like, I just took a step in. And also because social media became everybody's job at like starting very, like not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can, a lot of things that I'm seeing, people are just losing art. You know, mm. I am an artist. I love, I have no desire to, I don't, at first, like before, like everybody became a content creator. I've always said like influencer and content creator are two different things. I ain't trying to influence anybody to do anything. <laughs> content creators at the time, like 2020, in my, in my mind, were like the artists whose industry shut down. So now they're just creating their content to put onto the internet as, again, a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So that was my mind. But now everybody is is a content creator. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. I respect the hustle. That's what, I mean, I'm doing it. But I also just, like, always wanted to try to do something different. So I, like, I just took a step back and, like, did some more, like, inner healing and just, like, just scouting and, like, seeing what's going on and seeing what's missing, what's, what am I not being fulfilled when I see, you know, for them, when I look at social media? So the number one thing I came up with is my character is nobody really knows who she is. I don't even know who she is. So it's like, she's just a meme. Let's give her some depth. Let's, I, I don't say I'm a comedian, but I know I'm funny and You're I'm an actor. Yeah. So it's like, I've found a new passion in writing and producing. So it was like, we're I'm, I'm just creating new content for Kleptor that's taking her out of that meme format. And also I'm really trying to branch away from Dora as much as possible. <laughs> I know, I know it is really hard when you do blow up for with like one thing. Yeah. And it's like, that's kind of your bit. Yeah. But and like, like I, there's so much more I was so unfulfilled. I swear to God, I made every single backpack backpack video that can ever be made. <laughs> and people are like, we want more of those. I'm like, I'm so sorry. We are out of stock. We don't have any more. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, so it's like I want to – longevity is also another thing. Like I want to produce content that has longevity. I'm not saying my normal content wasn't, but, you know, the quick, fast pace. And also as a content creator who get paid from, like, views and brand deals, mm -hmm. all these social media sites who are, like, changing all these different ways to get paid and, like, make more money. I got I to gotta stay up with the trends. I can't make these six-second 
portrait mode videos anymore. I need to make some extensive shit that people are going to sit and are going to enjoy. And I know I have the capability. Right. I just never felt the need to do it because I was comfortable with where I was at. But I was no longer comfortable, so now I'm just taking a new step. So prepare to see Kliptor has a voice. She has a personality. She has a sexuality. She has, you know, issues. She has things, you know, there's just so much that I had to, I literally stripped her. I was like, all I got is a bob and a pink shirt, and we got to go from there. And now I've created this whole new character of who Kleptora is, and I'm so excited to, like, show everybody. And, yeah, just come back into the social media world, just, like, producing. I got, it sounds so condescending to say producing art, because everybody's producing art, but it's just not, I'm not a get ready with me. I'm not a information no, i'm not a story time teller you know i would just like to create a piece of art that you can just sit and escape and laugh mm -hmm. that's my goal and that's what i do best so that's kind of what i want to do but more extensive than a six second video clip with right. door music i mean you have such an extensive background with like theater and dance and right. you just want to like wrap that all together so like Kleptora is like kind of the it girl for that that's literally on my on my drive race board 2024 Kleptora is the new it girl I have written. <laughs> Speaking it into existence right now. That is the vibe that, that that's the plan. That was, I see it. that was the plan and that's what's about to happen. I get in situations to where like I'm too busy to get a haircut, but I'm like have to be in appearance somewhere. Mm. And if I wear a hat, I would just like shave the side of my head that you can't see. <laughs> it's all fucked up up here. And I just recently went to the barber before like a few days ago. So thank God. Because I, I was, everything was on its last leg. A hair malfunction? I don't think there's anything worse. Like, was like, oh, oh, were you trying? I was like, no, sir. There was no trying involved. I knew what I was doing, and I just pray that you can fix it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cutting okay. your own hair, like, what is, buzzing your own hair? I'm not dexterous enough for that. Is that the word? That's. I mean, that's a big word. I don't even know. It's like, I dexterous. can't use both hands. You Wait, you are? No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> so it's like all the, like the, and like seeing in the reflection, mm -hmm. I think I'm just kind of dumb, honestly. Same. <laughs> like, bitch, same. Like when you look in the reflection, I'm like, oh, that's left. Oh. Like that's. I, I can't that's, figure that out. I'm always like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Are you a lefty or a righty? I am a righty, but I used, they assumed I was going to be a lefty because I. When How I was do you a, just assume that? What do you mean? Well, when I was a baby, I used my left hand to do everything, like. The, holding the bottle, everything. But then I fell off a couple steps and broke my left arm. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm so sorry. they, and whilst in the baby cast, I ended up using my right oh. hand. So now I'm more right handed. <laughs> a little baby cast. I guess. That's a story I was told. Who knows? You're like, I don't know. This is, this <laughs> I don't is not know. factual. But it's like, why make that up? I mean, yeah. Hey. Hey. We are going to jump into a game. I love games. Do you? I do. Okay. Never have I ever. Have you played it? I have played Never Have I Ever multiple times. It's one of my favorite games. Is it? Yeah, because sometimes if the answer is crazy and I have to put a finger down, I love the the theater, like the theatrics of getting to explain myself. Mm. You're like, <laughs> and give me my mic. My yeah, because it's like, this is a storytelling moment. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Do I have to like put a finger down? I actually don't know that version. <laughs> I'm like, is, this am not I not the same, is that the same game? It's like I say, never have I ever, and then I give you okay. a scenario, and I'm, then you'll say, I have or I haven't. I'm making it more complex than it should be. But I like, I don't know what the finger. I don't want to hold up hands. You know what? We're not gonna <laughs> ask you. We're not gonna ask you to work. Okay. Okay. You've already been serving. See you NT this whole time. Thank you. I try. I don't try. It just happens. Never have I ever stole my significant other's phone to look through it. Never. Mm. Would you ever if you suspected? No. Tell me about it. I wouldn't do it. Um, I'm a very, I don't like people being in my business, but also like if I wanted, wanted to go to my phone, I, I don't have anything in there. It's just my <laughs> personal thing. And I'm just don't like doing things to people that I don't want done to me because yeah. that gives them leverage to do it to you another time. And like, there's nothing shady on there, but like, I don't need you seeing me. Recording myself singing Cotton Eye Joe in the dark in my bedroom. At Not 3 Cotton Eye Joe. Wait, time out. You know, you, just you know the Cotton Eye Joe jock jams mix? I don't. But I'm going to learn it. <laughs> Someone out there is going to know what I'm talking about. It is like 
a fucking bop. Like if I heard that in mm-hmm. a club in WeHo, I would lose my shit. I, l- I need to figure that out. I need to find Cotton out. Cotton Eye that Joe, Jock Jams. Jock Jams. Remix. The, your intensity in your eyes. You really, <laughs> I believe you. I'm excited to hear it's it. It's really good. It's really good. It's really but no, good. But no, on a serious standpoint, like aside from the bullshit. No, I wouldn't do it. Um, if I suspect something, I'm just going to call it out and ask. Half of the time, if I get to the point where I ask, I already know the answer. So there's no need to go digging because sometimes you don't want to. If you know enough, that's enough. Mm-hmm. If you know too much, it's too much. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like also when you have that feeling, if you yeah. have the feeling to do something like that, there is probably that's, a that's good enough. reason. That's Therefore, enough. exit stage left yeah. swiftly. And also like. Ooh, the anxiety of like doing that, like fit the fit, the anxiety <laughs> of like trying not like to get like caught. Like it's like you're a hacker. It's like because like, I'm a, I'm gonna stand behind what I did if I get caught, but like, I still don't want to get caught. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, sweating. I'm like oh, this is terrifying. But yeah. like, if he, if they do fucking like say something, I'm gonna be like yeah, I was going through your phone, but like, I don't want to get what? yeah, and what? what? But like, I don't want to get caught. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> that is embarrassing. But uh, yeah, it's like again, if you just have the feeling. Woo. That's enough. That is enough for us. We said, uh-uh. <laughs> just take the contacts out. Right. Let it be take blurry. Take out the contacts and just live in blur. <laughs> just, be, just live like blurry. Blur bliss. Blur bliss. <laughs> I love it. Okay, next one. Okay. Never have I ever stole money from my mom's purse as a kid. I, I, the fact that I had to think about it is, dramatic is, pause. is um, you know, those, that's crazy. But I don't think so. I'm just trying to, I was a bad kid. So I'm too busy trying to think about the times that I have, but I can't. So I'm going to assume that I did not. But no, I was a bad kid. One time, what shifted my, <laughs> what shifted my like personality from being really bad in school was I was playing with a, What's those little hair styling clips, the silver ones that like look like crocodile mouths? Oh, yeah. Like the, pin curls. The jog yeah. I had one of those and I was playing in her bathroom in the electrical socket and I got shocked. <laughs> and from that moment. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The ones that you put in Yeah, curls. that you like okay. put in curls. And I got sh- shocked and it knocked all the power out in her bathroom. And since then, I've, I was so much <laughs> better as a child. <laughs> I've not been the same. Shook you to your core. Yeah, that was crazy. God damn. <laughs> Did that hurt? I don't remember it. I mean, I remember the situation, <laughs> but like, I don't remember like, oh, if it hurt or anything. I think it was, it was necessary. <laughs> it was necessary. <laughs> I used to steal from the dollar store, but I don't think I stole mm. from my own mother. Okay. Just a little swipe. Yeah. Like I had some sunglasses one time from the dollar store. We had a garage sale. and She was like, where'd you get those? And I was like, Dollar Tree. And she knew I didn't have any money. I'm like seven. <laughs> you're like what did not get to enjoy the rest of that day like, <laughs> not the dollar tree though yeah kb toys dollar tree win dixie not win dixie win dixie because of win dixie blame it on, <laughs> blame it on miss dixie <laughs> okay next one never have i ever accidentally let out a fart in front of a crush Never. I don't even fart in front of my own family members. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's it's not I don't judge anybody who does. I just prefer not to. <laughs> Ow. But I would hit myself in the eye with the microphone. Uh-uh. But no, I, I just don't prefer not to. It's not a comfortable like type of ass. It's not a safe space for you. Not well it's not even space. that. That's not even the issue. It's just like why? I don't know. Is, am I too uptight? Some people. Your asshole might be. Yeah. No, just like casually sober and farting. No, I've not done that. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I I have one bad experience with that. Uh oh, tell me. Yeah, I like just it just flashed <laughs> before my eyes when we were talking about this. Okay, so I was like sleeping over at a guy's house. Okay. And I like woke myself up by ripping ass. <laughs> like my. It like farted so loud that it shook me <laughs> from a slumber. It shook me from a slumber. Oh. Uh-huh. And I was like trying to make sounds. <laughs> I was trying to make sounds because I'm like, fuck. So I'm like, like shaking the sheets and like patting down the pillows. And I was just like. You're like pow driving the yeah. floor. <laughs> you know, like. I'm like. <laughs> 
anything you can to stop to distract oh from the sound. I get literally it. anything. Yeah, that I think I have a fear of just like looking stupid. Because a lot of my successes <laughs> in my life or the way that I operate is because I just don't want to be embarrassed over the situation. So I just won't do it. Okay. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. Whew, let's bring it back. Okay. Never have I ever Googled something bizarre that you had to clear your search history. Mm, I have multiple times. And if I'm not even joking, I literally, I'm not even bullshitting when I tell you this. And it's so crazy you say that because in the Uber here, and I knew that there were games going to be played. Mm. And I cleared my search history just in case there was something you guys asking to see something on my phone. And I swear <laughs> to all my life, I literally did the only way here. Because I searched the craziest shit all the time. Nothing illegal. I will say that. But I have questions. And, I w- and sometimes I'm like... I hear about something like, I want to see what that looks like. <laughs> what, what is that? What's this about? Oh, there's a video. Let me click on and see what that's about. I do search a lot of crazy things. So, yes. One thing. So, I have a, he turns one next month, a multi poo. His name is Boots. With a Z. Boots, the house down, Treywick. And he, he's getting neutered soon, uh-huh. like next month. But I've never seen dog balls before. So when I was like giving him a bath and like cutting his hair the other day, there was like this his balls was like so dark and like so big. And I was like, I've never seen that before. So I had to Google multiple breeds of like dog nuts and just like just get a scout of like, are these normal? Just like get like a compilation of dog nuts. And then I make the deciding factor if I should be concerned or not. That was probably the most recent. And were we thing. concerned? What was the defi- deciding factor? No, there was there was just his nuts. They're they're pretty normal, but they're gonna be gone soon. But R. I. P. I realized that when I pick him up and hold him like a little baby, that he always whines. It's because he's sitting on his nuts. Yeah, they're really? huge. That's crazy. Boots. <laughs> boots. Uh, boots with the big balls. Yes. So yeah, that was probably the craziest thing recently I've searched. You got to be prepared. I'm always prepared. I'm a Virgo moon. You stay ready. I stay ready. <laughs> anxiety too. Yeah. yeah, we like we blame it on astrology. That's it. <laughs> it's really anxiety half of the time. Shh, yeah, people are like, oh, I don't fuck with this type of sign. I was like, maybe they're just anxious. Mm. You no, know, maybe it's not the sign itself. Maybe this person. <laughs> Do you not anxious. talk to people though, like based off zodiacs? Not necessarily. I do have like things that I'm like, oh, this zodiac is this and this zodiac is that, or like my favorite. But I don't have any like least favorites. I do have like some least favorite people who have specific signs, but I also have some favorite people that are those same exact mm. signs. So that's crazy. The only thing I can say for a fact is that Leos are the best, and there's nothing sexier than a Scorpio. <laughs> Scorpios, they're mysterious. That's like. I wouldn't, like, that's their only trait sometimes, most times, is that they're just, yeah, there's nothing <laughs> sexier than a Scorpio. Never have I ever sexted. Like, is it, like, sending news, or is it, like, the text equivalent to, like, phone sex? Se- text equivalent to phone sex, for me. Okay, in but that you aspect, can, You can add, no. like, a heated little photo, maybe. I hate small talk, so no, of that, that, that aspect, but I've definitely had shorter periods of like photo sending and mm. different conversation. But then it's like, going to bed. Sorry. <laughs> Just like drop some heat. Yeah, I was like, drop go. some heat. I'm like, do not disturb. You know, <laughs> I keep little DMD, it. bye. Right. So I've done that aspect, but like anything too prolonged, it was like, it's not interesting to me. I'm like, I feel like I'm doing an essay. I feel like I'm like, I'm like in a, a novel. Like I'm yeah, writing a novel with like, you. This it's is like, work. Like I'm not interested. And it's usually like when I'm like no makeup on, like acne, like medicine, like on my face. I'm just like. Your thumbs. Like, so, like, blah, the blah, you, blah. It's like The you behind your thumbs is generally way more sexy than you in person at that moment. You're just texting, being the sexy human being, but like realistically, you're like retainer in. Exactly. Oily skin from the skincare routine, mm-hmm. hair wrapped. I get it. Literally like <laughs> just doused in skincare. Yeah. Just looking like a drowned rat. <laughs> it's like, it's for them too. That's a funny thing. Like sexting is so for men. Like, I don't know, maybe like girls are like, oh my gosh, but like for me. This is so funny because it's so I, one-sided. I talk it's to so my one-sided. friends like this because I'm always talking about men as one, but there is the understanding <laughs> that when you say men, you mean men. <laughs> like if I'm feeling it, like I'll send you a photo or maybe, maybe I'll watermark it too. Who knows? But like. <laughs> Not a watermark. Like other than that, like, 
I don't want to talk through a text. If like, are you a FaceTime or call type of vibe? Are you yes. like really? I I'm more so FaceTime than call. Okay, but um, yeah, I I would lo- I love to FaceTime. I don't know. It's just. I don't care about the superficial bullshit. I'm not a fan of like, if we're going to do anything, it has to be a connection in regards to that's a little bit more genuine. Mm -hmm. And also I am, I'm also a bad interpreter and deliverer of (laughs) vibes through texting. So I honestly feel more comfortable speaking to someone face to face, regardless of what I'm saying. I just need to know the vibe of what I'm saying and what I mean. I don't want anything misconstrued. If I want it to be bitchy, I want you to know that without any. If I'm going to be a cunt, yeah, I, like, want, I want you, you to, know. to know that. But if I'm not trying to, but I'm going against something that you're saying, I want you to know that as well. I don't yeah. like being, I don't like my mood being assumed. Mm. But it's so true. I mean, text yeah. is very like you could take a high, and, and also be like, that I'm high anxious. seemed aggressive. Hi, exactly. Yeah. As an anxious person, it's like whatever you say, you put a period behind it. I'm like, oh, what's when going on? When people start using punctu- punctuation. My anxiety skyrockets. I'm like, why is there a period? I've started doing voice to text, but I've started, I've started to apologize to people and be like, I'm so sorry that there is so much punctuation in this text message. It I seems way that. too formal. And I want you to know I'm just driving down the street. No, I do that all yeah. the time. And it makes me sound like <laughs> the biggest bitch because I am putting commas on commas, periods on fucking periods. Yeah. But I'm like, I just, my little thumbs are tired. And that's why I'm like, I'm always dictating my text. That and speakerphone are my two favorite things. And also my phone is, is on vibrate right now. But like my, in order for me to hear it, mm-hmm. it has to be on loud. I don't know if it's a busy thing or an old person thing, but I'm here for it. I feel very Kardashian or like old school housewives when they just yeah. like drive in the car with the phone on speakers of the cameraman can hear. I love that. The drama <laughs> to it. The drama. I love it. All right. Never have I ever. Stolen something from a job. Mm. <laughs> I have. There's a story there. There's multiple stories. I'm trying to see which one I can legally tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> I. Okay, so it is stealing, but not necessarily for free. Mm-hmm. But there were times where I would, um, as an assistant manager of a clothing store, you know, there's certain codes that I'm always going to know. So I'm always going to get the most maximum discount as possible. But with a, but with, since I have a good conscience, you know, I feel like I have a good conscience if I pay for it at least. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of clothes that I've gotten while working for this place for extremely cheap. And also since I was the assistant manager, I got first dibs on the boxes. <laughs> and knew what was out before everybody else knew what was out. So I did do that. But that's pretty much it. I haven't stolen anything. There is really one crazy situation that I literally cannot even say. I'm like, I will literally go to jail oh God, if I talk I about this. I will literally probably get a knock on my door. But it was, it, was, it was a whole involvement. I was a very young person working in a job that I had no business working at that age mixed with a bunch of adults who've been doing it for years and I got caught into some bullshit <laughs> and didn't know I was being caught into bullshit, but I dodged, but a lot of shit I, I just missed <laughs> because thank God of my innocence and my age. That was some crazy times. But um, yeah, other than that, that was pretty much it. I've had situations where people thought I was stealing like here one time I had a job at a hair salon in Beverly Hills and one of my best friends was stealing tips from the hairdressers and told the management that it was me, but mm-hmm. they were watching us both su- on surveillance for like two weeks secretly. And they found out it wasn't me. But when they told me things got bad and it was a whole crazy situation. Insane. Yeah. I hate being lied on. I hate yeah. being lied on. That's messed up. It's really messed up. <laughs> You're not friends with that person anymore. No, that okay. was the very last time I ever spoken or saw that person, which was for good. Because for honestly, for like three years, I had one mission. If I ever saw that person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going in for the kill. Yeah. So like that's completely past now. But that was a crazy situation. And yeah, that was another reason I was like, see, I tried to li- I try to work a normal job here in L.A. And that's just not for me. Because of the bullshit. 
<laughs> You're beyond the bullshit. I was so beyond Above the, bullshit. the bullshit. Kleptora has, but no, I... Right. Have I stolen? Yes. From a job? No. Okay. Have I stolen? 100%. 1,000 yeah. percent. Have I stolen from a job? No, because honestly, I come from a place where if you got a job, you got to keep it. OK, well, that was the last of never have I ever. How do we feel about it? I feel good. I feel exposed. <laughs> I feel like the, um, the FBI may be on my trail. FBI, They'd Beyonce. Be like, you know what? Something was fishy. And now he mentioned it. Let's, let's regroup. We're like, let's open this cold case There's back so up, shall we? There's so many more other we? things that need to be focusing on. I feel like we me. need a whole other episode. Maybe I can like go to jail and play the next Gypsy Rose or something. And the D is higher. <laughs> what was it? The um, I'm living my best life. <laughs> I'm living my best life. Wait, I'm on a high right now. I'm on a high right, right now. I think it's not me. Gypsy, honey. See, like, if you were to look at, like, I think that is satire. That is so funny to me. There's no way that can be real of like doing that. <laughs> it's too much. That. Doing the press tour. I think it's, it had to be satire that I don't know. That's just how I take every information that's given to me, I guess, to be happier. <laughs> so I think mean, everything that's is like a joke. such a good way to just take life. Yeah. Everything a life is a lesson. Take everything it as satire. is a joke. Nothing's and if real. it's not a joke, it's not for me. It's not for us. <laughs> if we're not going to LOL at the end of it, get it the fuck out of our face. Exactly. I love to laugh. Nick. Hi. Kleptora, <laughs> it has been such a beautiful moment to talk with you. This has been so much fun. I finally, I'm so glad I got to sit down and just like talk because yeah. this is what I've always wanted to do. You know, I've had opportunities to do certain things, but I just didn't feel like I was, it was necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm not going to go to too many events that I'm invited to because like, why? You know, too many interviews come like, I'm not really doing anything. Yeah. But like this is perfect timing for like, this new era that I'm ready to present. So thank you for asking me over. Thank you so much for being on After Curfew Podcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. I thank you guys so much for this opportunity. I cannot wait to get home and reminisce on all of the beautiful things that I've learned, all the beautiful things that I've stolen. It was so nice meeting you.